Story 1. When I was in high school, we had a firefighter explorer program where we could go and do OJT shadowing at a few of the local departments. One all-volunteer department let some of us juniors and seniors respond to specific calls to do minor light work, hold stop signs, carry the ladders, fetch tools, etc., and allowed us to have a code to their cipher lock. They gave the code to the four local kids so we could get there and unlock the doors and open the bays and get trucks started and ready to roll. One night, the class idiot decided to go into their department and play pranks on them took all their hoses off the trucks, strung them around the bays, and looped them through the axles, discharged all of the foam out of the main engine, and screwed with everyone's bunker gear by swapping boots and removing the liners of structural gear, among other things. Naturally, it ended very badly when a call came in for a structure fire, and when the actual firefighters showed up, the entire house was in such disarray, and no truck could even leave. They ended up calling a town 20 minutes away to respond. Two people died in the fire. Naturally, all four of us were the top suspects, and it didn't take the police long to figure it out, as the place was full of surveillance cameras. He was arrested, his parents got the bill for all the damages, and we never saw him nor his family again after that. They just skipped the area and vanished overnight. The fire department killed almost all ties with the Explorer program, and allowed us to respond to minor calls. I went on to get certified as a firefighter and spent five awesome years with them, where I still seasonally volunteer during wildlife season as a firefighter. Story 2. We had a student teacher for like six months when I was in sixth grade, and towards the end of her time with us, she had to record herself teaching a lesson to the class, then provide the video to her school. As a final exam or something, we had this class clown who had to sit in the back, which happened to be near the camcorder. During the recording, he kept saying things like, Shit. Quiet enough for no one in the class to hear, but loud enough to be obvious on the recording. The student teacher ended up having to redo the entire video, and we had to sit through the exact same lesson a week later without the class clown present. Story 3. Art class. Teacher leaves. Class clown says, Dare me to eat this paint? My buddy and I ignore him. He gets really pushy about eating paint. We tell him to do whatever the hell he wants. He stands on a chair and eats two tubes of paint when the teacher walks back in. Gets marched to the nurse. We breathed a sigh of relief that he was gone. Later that day, my buddy and I got called to the principal's office. Informed he is at the hospital getting his stomach pumped. And that it's our fault. I had never been in trouble before. Spent one hour in isolated detention to see if I wanted to share more. Literally just locked in a tiny ass room. Got a really long lecture about if I told someone to jump off a bridge and they did it, it would be my fault. I again denied any fault. Got put back in isolation until the end of the day. My parents went nuclear when I got home and told them what happened. Clown showed up the next day just grinning and laughing because he heard we got in trouble. <laughs> Story 4. Dude announced, watch this, to his friends at lunchtime, and walked out of City Hall with a grin on his face and an empty suitcase. At that point, I'm guessing. He was wearing a school colors jacket. Shortly thereafter, the fire department rolled up and assisted with the evacuations. He'd smoke-bombed the hell out of the place. His life after that was not a happy one. Not because of that event, though, but because he was f***ing crazy. Story 5. In high school, we had a gym teacher who was maybe a year out from retirement. Really chill guy who really wanted everyone to have fun and improve their health and fitness. Was regarded as the man, and many graduates would return just to check in on him and say hey. He always remembered everyone and was just a good dude. Took no nonsense, but still knew how to have fun and make people feel welcome and included. Well, he and his wife were getting up there in age, and as that tends to go, she fell terribly ill. People rallied around him, raised funds, everything we could do. But there was this one kid who always had to stir up and do his best to be disruptive. Like it was his job. Really thought he was some sort of gangster tough guy. Anyway, during roll call attendance in the beginning of class, he said something smart, and understandably, the teacher was not in the mood. 
There was a little back and forth, and the kid gets in his face and says something really disrespectful and terrible. Something like, I hope your wife's rots off before she dies, or something. Needless to say, everyone was ready to rush this idiot, but before anyone could even shift a foot under themselves, Teach pops him right in the face. Just a quick jab, the muscle memory of an old boxer. It was glorious. The kid fell on his ass so quickly, and before he could even react, he was swarmed and pulled far away by the rest of the class. At first, the teacher was suspended, and there was talk of him being charged. But literally, the entire class testified on his behalf, and it was somehow swept under the rug. The teacher was able to retire early, and the head was suspended. Pretty sure his parents knew how much of a pain he was and deserved the punch. Story 6. The class asshole, even though he considered himself the clown, picked on this kid for years, on and off. And this kid had temper issues. I think maybe home life dealings, that sort of thing, and used to absolutely blow up in the middle of class, either from getting picked on or from stress over assignments and such. And it used to create a spectacle, which, unfortunately, did not help his reputation in school, because kids are all assholes. By high school, he'd started to be able to handle it better. He knew when to step out to collect himself, even when woefully clueless teachers on power trips gave him shit themselves. It was really cool to see some positive growth for him, until him and the original asshole clown had a class together again. One day, asshole decides to pester the kid, get on his nerves like old times, and get under his skin. References one of the kids' past blow-ups from years ago and that they had class together, but only a couple of us were there for that and knew what the reference was. And the dumb tries to explain it and make fun of the kid all over again for it. Kid loses it lobs his heavy ass binder at the asshole's head, gets in his face and curses him out, puts him in his place. Oh, but it was so shitty to see this kid lose all composure again, after he'd clearly worked so hard on it. But boy, was it fantastic to see his bully finally get what was coming to him. I don't think the binder connected, and thank goodness our teacher seemed to see right through what was going on. So while I don't know what actually happened disciplinarily, I think the kid finally had our teacher on his side, and the asshole finally learned to keep his shit to himself. Story 7. Middle school in 2006. Kid I knew didn't want to turn in his English essay on Monday, so he wrote bomb threats on a few of the bathroom stalls. We still had school Monday. He still failed the assignment. The EOD unit was at the school all day with bomb-sniffing dogs, and one of the teachers eventually recognized his handwriting. Never saw him again. Story 8. When I was in high school, we were on our way to the zoo for an excursion, and a friend of mine who was the epitome of a class clown held up a sign to the glass back window of the bus that read, Bomb on Bus. One or more of the people driving behind the bus called it in, and there was an absolute show evacuating a busload of students onto one of Australia's busiest freeways. I should probably mention that this occurred a few months after the September 11th attacks, when the world was still adjusting to the new normal. Story 9. I have a hard time picking between two. Rub an eraser on a dirty desk for several minutes, disassemble a pen, snort the eraser rubber as if it's drugs or tobacco, and then he spent the next few hours coughing and wheezing. Some folks in our class used to throw wet paper that they chewed on against the ceiling quite often. It'd stick on there and look disgusting. The clown wanted to one-up those folks and chewed a giant ball of paper and threw it at the blackboard. The teacher wrote around it and acted as if nothing happened, and then shouted at him after class was over. Needless to say, he didn't turn out particularly well after high school. Story 10. The class clown at my middle school saw a kid having a seizure on the ground during recess and started kicking him and throwing dirt on him. We had a whole assembly about it, where he had to get on stage and apologize to the entire school. Story 11. In seventh grade at a public school, our class was on the second floor. The class clown stood up in the middle of class, said, I can't take it anymore, ran to the back of the classroom, opened the window, and jumped. Teacher screamed, and we all laughed. There was an addition to the building, and the roof was under the window where the class clown was standing with a big grin. 
The teacher quit shortly after due to this and several other incidents in her class. Story 12. He would flirt with the Spanish teacher, who I'll admit was really attractive. And the flirting in class was always funny since he was genuinely funny. But one day, he just didn't show up to class, and the school's guidance counselor gave us an hour-long lecture about how a student's flirting can be really harassing to teachers. And it was heavily implied he groped her. Very disgusting. Story 13. We had this kid who would take the smaller butter packets from the cafeteria and bring them to the fifth period history class. At some point, he would scoop out a glob with his pen and flick the dairy bullet on our history teacher's ass when he walked by. He did this probably five or six times without getting caught. One day, he f***ed up and scraped the teacher's butt with his pen. The teacher checked his pants and found the butter smear. The kid's eyes got super wide like a true deer in headlights. He had no excuse for why he did this prank. He just kept apologizing like it was an accident. My goodness, who accidentally flicks butter on an old man's ass? I'm pretty sure he never graduated. Not surprisingly. Story 14. In seventh grade, the class clown challenged our English teacher to a sparring wrestling match. The taunting went on for weeks until the teacher finally agreed. Last 10 minutes was spent with the class clown having his ass handed to him. No one was injured, and it was very entertaining. I learned years later the English teacher was active in the reserves, which explained his ability to quickly neutralize the class clown without taking it too far. Story 15. There was an overhead projector in the back of the room. It wasn't plugged into the wall. Tuesdays and Thursdays we had classes that would be 90 minutes because they only met twice a week. Over the course of the 90 minute class, he found this projector, fiddled with the plug and then eventually cut the cord off the projector. He did this with some sort of metal piece from his desk. Well, one thing led to another, and he ended up stripping out the insulation from the cord. Then, I guess it sort of naturally progressed. He figured out that he had bare wire in one hand and a plug on the other. So he plugged it back into the wall and touched a desk. Big flash. Kid said, holy shit. Then he touched a girl with it. She was fine, but it shocked her pretty good. Story 16. When I was a senior in high school, there was a guy in my math class whose mother had passed away in 2019. Not exactly sure how she died though. Someone had made fun of his dead mom, and the guy turned around and punched him in the face. The guy was suspended for a few days. The guy was suspended for a few days. I lost my mother in 2017, so I could totally sympathize with the guy. Joking about someone's dead parent is a surefire way to end up with a black eye and a fat lip. Story 17. In college, we had a guy in a philosophy class who was constantly talking trash to the teacher. At one point, he got on about tattoos and told the professor he should go get a tattoo. Without missing a beat, the professor pulls up his sleeve and he's got a concentration camp number tattooed on his arm and looks the kid in the face and says, Yeah. Yeah, I've got all the tattoos I need. The kid went from badass to bad ass in a nanosecond. Story 18. Dude was caught drawing on desks with permanent markers. Teacher made him get some alcohol spray and paper towels to wipe it off. After getting off all the markers, he started wiping the desk with the alcohol-soaked paper towel and lighting it on fire. He'd wait till the fire disappeared and do it again. After about the third or fourth time, he didn't wait long enough, and when he went to wipe the table again, it lit the paper towel on fire. He ended up throwing the fireball onto the carpet in the middle of the classroom, and the teacher had to grab a fire hose to put it out. Story 19. It was September 11, 2001, 9-11. The attacks on the World Trade Center had just happened. We were in our first class of the day, and the teacher prefaced talking about it all by asking, does anyone know where the World Trade Center is? The class clown quickly replied with, On the ground now. A couple of his buddies chuckled a bit, but the rest of us were shocked. The teacher was so pissed off that she physically dragged him to the principal's office. He wound up getting detention. This happened in Ontario, Canada, not far from the New York border. Story 20. I had the most amazing grade 7 teacher, Mrs. Jones. She brought in world news and never hid the truth of things from us. 
I was an advanced reader at the time, and so she brought me her own copy of The Shining and It, told me to just blank out the swear words I cross. She was dope. I go to grade 8, and Mrs. Jones gets one of those super goofballs who was without a doubt a funny kid, but was always on the verge of going one step too far. Well, one day, he decides to grab a couple pencil crayons and jam them in his ear and pretend to lose his balance. He did. Landed right on one of the pencil crayons. Blood f***ing everywhere. Thankfully, he only stabbed deep enough to ruin his hearing in the one ear. Unfortunately, Mrs. Jones never recovered, and I have no idea if she went back to teaching. I guess this whole story is a big allegory for the dangers of oversized classrooms. I think Mrs. Jones had 28 kids in that class by herself. Story 21 Was in art class, and our teacher was a Vietnam veteran who flew medical helicopters. All he saw day in and day out was dead or dying soldiers. Class clown threw a ball of paper and yelled grenade at the teacher. Teacher dove under his desk frightened. Following week, the clown threw a wad of clay on the ceiling, and that's when the teacher snapped. Teacher grabbed the student by the throat and pinned him to the wall with the student's feet not touching the floor. Teacher looked him in the eye and said, We used to kill f***s like you, and then yelled at him to get out. Following day, our teacher suddenly retired, and we never saw him again. I never felt bad for the kid. He got what he deserved. Never heard officially what happened to the teacher. Hope the guy keeps his pension. Story 22. When I was in fourth grade, our teacher brought in a bowl of mercury for a science lesson and told us not to touch it. She got called down to the office and Brad W. immediately went over to the bowl and spilled some of it. He tried to sweep it up, but that broke it up into millions of tiny mercury balls that skittered all over the floor. He got paddled. Story 23. During an IT class, in which we were all given an autobiography writing project, the class clown wrote one about the teacher, Mr. B, instead. The work was posted in the school hall for all to see. It became obvious that Mr. B hadn't checked anyone's work before pinning it up at a parent's evening. Shocked faculty members, parents, and students alike read that Mr. B's previous employment included Grand Dragon of the KK and that he'd been fired from a kindergarten. How Mr. B was proud to be registered as a sex offender. His hobbies were listed as cottaging, dogging, stalking, pegging, kids, and voyeurism. Mr. B had a nervous breakdown and wasn't seen for six months. The class clown got expelled. Story 24. The kid was flicking his lighter on an underclassman's hair. I think he assumed his lighter was empty and had no chance of actually hurting the kid. But the kid freaked out and notified either his parents or the school staff. And about a day later, the lighter kid got expelled. Outside of this incident, he was an okay guy. Not great with realizing when to stop, though. Another kid with a rather extreme sense of humor decided to make an offhand remark, sarcastically saying something along the lines of, Just because I'm weird and play a f ton of Call of Duty doesn't mean I'm gonna shoot this sh up or something along those lines. A lot of kids heard, I'm gonna shoot this hole up, and he was booted almost ASAP. Story 25. Everyone knew how easy it was to get a rise out of my year 11 math teacher. She was an elderly woman who could not control a class. I mostly just kept my head down to focus on doing the actual work, but one lesson, the rowdier kid started to try and throw things into her coffee mug, and actually got things like pens and an eraser in. At that point, I had a quiet word with the teacher to basically not drink it. I don't make a habit of being a snitch, but I have to draw the line somewhere. Story 26. In grade 9 science class, there were small square sinks bordering the classroom. They had pointed faucets for science reasons. One class, I jammed one end of a rubber Bunsen burner tube on the pointed faucet. I stuck a highlighter in the other end of the tube and turned the water on too low. I checked in on it after a couple of minutes, only to find the rubber hose had expanded to fill the entire sink. It looked like a big, translucent balloon filled with sloshing water. I panicked and went to my desk to brace for the inevitable. Time was going very slow until, boom, the thing exploded like a bomb. The sound was insane. It knocked down the ceiling tiles, soaked everything and everyone near it. It was chaos for a few minutes, but I just sat quietly on the other side of the room. I let the intrusive thoughts win that day. My bad.